Hey everybody, welcome back. Ooh, this is a good one. You're gonna enjoy this. Guys, my guests tonight are the co-directors of Deliver Us, a new horror film that reimagines the biblical story of the Immaculate Conception. They are both accomplished filmmakers who have worked on various genres and formats, from comedy to drama, from feature films to graphic novels. They are also the founders of World's Fair Pictures, a production company that has produced compelling films and content across 19 countries. They have a passion for storytelling and a flair for creative creativity, which they have showcased in their latest film, which is both terrifying and thought-provoking. It is my honor to introduce you to our esteemed guests for the night, two of the most talented and visionary directors in the industry right now. Please welcome to the show the amazing Leroy Coons and Crew Ennis. All right, joining me tonight is uh, two incredible guys, two of the uh, uh, visionaries behind the new horror. Uh, uh, I don't even know what to really classify it as the horror thriller uh, religious uh, masterpiece you got going deliver us which will be in theaters and on demand September 29th it's I've got co-director producer crew Ennis and not to be outdone co-director co-writer producer actor Lee Roy Coons gentlemen thank you for joining us tonight thanks for having us Michael awesome uh so uh the 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 show is it's it's for a military audience, uh, made for veterans by veterans kind of thing. So I like to always ask the guests. We like to get to know them a little bit first before we talk about the project. Um, so first, do you guys have any military connection, uh, family members, friends, anything like that? My father's a Vietnam vet, and um, um, every basically everyone I went to high school with, and then my grandfather's a vet. Uh, my mother's side and her brother um so military uh family over here for runs, sure yeah runs deep yeah and, and lee uh my grandfather uh world war ii was in the navy uh and my uh one of my best friends from home is actually flying out for the premiere this wednesday and he actually served uh two tours uh in afghanistan with the marines uh his name's Corey earhart Outstanding. Well, we thank them for your service and, and the family support. Obviously, it's always a big, big part of the journey. Um, so obviously, we're also a pop culture podcast and, and show. And so I'm curious in getting to know you guys outside of what you do. So directing and the writing and things like what do you guys geek out about? What's your what's your what's your thing? Oh, where we start? Um, I mean, Lee can take up this whole segment just talking about beer. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it'd be a whole nother show uh mine um i geek out about uh marine biology i know that sounds weird sharks in particular and then um old defenders those are my two passions i guess you'd say okay, so uh but that as interesting as the ocean is get ready here it comes go ahead tell us about the beer leroy <laughs> okay so i have like a full-scale brewery in my apartment uh i have 16 beers on tap individual styles that i brewed and like lots of fermenters running at all times and they're amazing thank you and then uh guitar been mostly country music so that's kind of like uh just like learning classic songs i like it you guys are gonna be fun i can already tell you guys are gonna be fun to <laughs> chat with um okay so before we dive again into the into the movie itself which i have so many things i want to ask you about um you know, what are some of maybe your your favorite horror films, uh, directors, and kind of how have they influenced, you know, your style or approach to filmmaking? Um, I'll go for my So one of my favorite films is Alien, the first one, the atmospheric horror, like, like that's the guidebook of how, how to do it, right? And then uh, a recent one that it's not a new movie, but Leroy brought it to my attention was Possession. It was just so such a haunting horrific like i still live with that movie but those those are two that come to mind Leroy. yeah i mean recently i think hereditary and the witch both got us really excited about the the renaissance of like really good horror films that are being made right now 
And then uh, in film school, watching uh, The Omen, The Exorcist, Rosemary's Baby, uh, Ken Russell's The Devils uh, in theaters uh, or like on on 35 millimeter. Um, and then more recently for this film, we didn't spend as much with horror. Like the, the mission with Robert De Niro was, I, I think, trying to get to the heart of these uh, these religious characters and also A Hidden Life by Terrence Malick that is just one of the just one of the more beautiful spiritual films I've probably seen in the last decade. All right, right on, right on. So, so let's talk about it. Um, Deliver Us is the film that you guys have, have, have created and brought to life. Uh, I have a, a short synopsis here. It's so it's for the audience to understand. It's uh, when a nun in a remote convent claims immaculate conception, the Vatican sends a team of priests to investigate concerned about an ancient prophecy that a woman will give birth to twin boys. One, possibly the Messiah and one, possibly the Antichrist, uh, which is which is compelling to say the least when you just <laughs> shorten it into that little blurb. Uh, and like I said, it can be found in theaters and on demand September 29th. So uh, I guess the first question, you know, because we I know the life cycle of of movies and how these things kind of start out the germ of the idea all the way to when it's released. How much of this was, you know, from inceptual to production, like how much was this done through the pandemic? Because I would assume quite a bit. Yeah, all um, of it. Yeah. Oh, when we thing. when we left for Estonia, it was there's six hours of light a day, and it was the safest place, um, as in the world as far as um, COVID was concerned. And then the time we started production because of the delay, it was the worst. So as the rest of the world was recovering, Estonia was finally getting hit. So everything was shut down. And um, but we were granted a um, license through the state to film as a necessity. So we kind of had keys to the kingdom. We got to go wherever we wanted and do whatever we wanted to do. And, you know, this um, we didn't have a you know studio budget to make this. And without that it or that just, you know, really gave us a lot of value. When you say Lee. Well, yeah, we just had access to the best people since there was no other jobs. So the very best actors in the entire country, the ones that have won the equivalent of their Academy Award would come in and uh, they'd have a few lines and they'd absolutely crush it. Or they'd have one line and it would just like bring so much to the film or to that character. Yep. That's incredible. So, yeah. and that I mean that we we could talk all day about 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 just about the challenge of making something like that because I can't imagine the the amount of work and planning that goes into you know, just on a typical everything worked out perfectly rosy cheeks kind of setting you know but, but to add all that I can't imagine. Um, what inspired uh, you guys to make? I mean, this is obviously. Uh, heavy material you know it reimagines the biblical story of the immaculate conception uh something that most wouldn't want to you know uh not poke fun of or make light of or 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 put into this uh kind of uh this way so what 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 gave you guys the the idea to do something like this well i was in a brewery with my father and uh <laughs> he, he pitched me the idea it was uh, he. It was his idea. He's like a nun that's pregnant with twin boys, identical twin boys. Because I, I thought that was a port, an important part of the theme. And one's uh, the Antichrist, and one's the Messiah. And then using my background in uh, as a Catholic, Catholic school in my life, and I'd still um, uh, practicing and uh, always studying, was a way to then uh, tell a lot of these uh, like a lot of what I know about the Bible or like. Uh, Dostoevsky's The Grand Inquisitor, a chapter from the Brothers Karamazov to really inspire like Vox Day and the, the evil part of the Catholic Church that's involved in this plot. So. And, and what uh, it, it got you excited, crew, to, to join this and get get on this train? Well, when Leroy pitched the, init uh, the initial idea, I my first thought was like, why hasn't anyone done this? You know, it's such a brilliant concept. It's uh, so dualistic and it's so simple. And then there's so many ways you can build off of it. And um, that was it. And then the, just the thought of working with Lee and Isaac, it's like my favorite thing to do. So it was kind of a no brainer. <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. Now, speaking of which, how did you guys, you know, cause obviously we, we, we know director runs the whole thing. He's the, the, the brains behind it and whatnot. 
how do you guys collaborate as co-directors on this project? How do you, what are the challenges and, and the benefits of kind of working together at that? Well, I would say um, the the benefits is it's uh, handling such an arduous journey. You know, it's uh, it's a marathon for sure. And then having someone you trust going into it um, makes things a lot easier and gives you a different perspective. You know, you can bounce ideas, helps you be more sure of yourself and help helps you make things that you're not so sure of more, you know, solid. That's that's off the top of the head. And I know. um Leroy, you were we were talking about this earlier in another interview, and he said something really interesting about like um, idea or decision fatigue. And I never even thought about it like that. And it made a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The aspect to be able to divide and conquer. You're needed to make choices on like four different uh, things all at once on a film set. So to like be able to do that or if one of us is too exhausted to make an important decision, you usually have to make it, uh, you know, usually by the end of the day. Um, one of us can do it or we're just bouncing the ideas off each other and then we come to something um, and we never want to discount Isaac so we kind of feel like the three of us work in tandem together and that if me and crew if me or crew ever had a disagreement on something Isaac would always be the tiebreaker so that we don't get in this like uh, you know arduous discussion or you know yeah yeah no. saved energy and then it's like you know Leroy put a lot of emphasis on working with actors and um uh rehearsing and then i and worked with isaac on uh, cinematic language and how how that would work and then we'd come together critique each other and then present you know what you see and it was a uh, it was a lot of fun i bet <laughs> sounds like what, what's the uh, uh it's not work if you love what you do right you don't work a day no so so obviously horror movies often you know hold up a mirror to society, right? It reflects their fears and their anxieties and insecurities. How does this film kind of tap into or comment on contemporary fear or, or cultural themes? I think uh, we've had that question before about this like real uptick in apocalyptic um, religious horror. And uh, I think it kind of started in literature a little bit, especially with young adults, like the Hunger Games and uh, Divergent. Um, there's just a lot of uh, talk out there. I was even researching these articles about the percentage of people that think the world's going to end in the next 12 years, or they think they're living in um, end times, which is usually just a feature of being human. A lot of people, they kind of all assume that if they're going to end, that the world's going to end with them. Like, how could it <laughs> be wrong? <laughs> yeah. So it's very human, but <laughs> so than ever, it's like, it's in the culture. Uh and I think those anxieties and and when it's such a primal fear uh, that I think a lot of people go back to their default. And obviously, religion is so, so hardwired in human beings, no matter who you are, that um, it comes to the surface in times like this. Well, fair point. I'm curious your your thoughts as, as the Catholic guy. And <laughs> what is it about um, religion? Because so many people have such a hard uh memory of it or or, or it's scary like it, it blends itself well to a horror movie because people are already kind of intimidated by it what what are your thoughts on that yeah i think uh when religion uh is done right it it is supposed to focus you on uh like the worst parts of the world and to kind of reconcile and on how to like like live morally in uh in in a place like this which you know, I think that we try to explore in the horror film that, like, yeah, the world has uh, so much evil or so much corruption. Um, how do you, uh, you know, uh, get through all that without despairing and then kind of embracing evil in itself? Um, so, um, crew, do you have anything to add? I was I had something I was spiraling back to, but no, I thought that was great. I mean, I don't think you could sum it up any any better than that. Perfect. Uh, and touching on those themes knowing that it's it's religious it right that, that you know we're, we're talking about a, a well-known story or a new take mm -hmm. on a well-known story how do you balance that with the horror elements right trying to get you know we know the, the, the jump scares and the in the heart and the the imagery and so like it, those seem like almost almost opposing ideas of like 
you know, this religious undertone with this horror, but how did you, uh, how do you balance that? Well, that was, um, that's part of the point for us um, is to examine religious themes in, a, in an authentic, with authenticity, you know, do it in a way that grounds it in reality. Like the, like the violence should have an effect on you. That's why we, we did it this way because it, in real life, it, you know, it's so destructive in the way it, you know, affects people, families, cultures. And so to do that on screen, it's like a warning. It's something you can, you know, take with you. I don't know if I'm doing the best job of summing that up, but um, that's kind of the idea. Could we talk about this? I would take it a step further and say, like, if you don't think it's uh, like you can reconcile, you haven't probably read enough of the Bible because it is so violent. It is so brutal. It has some of the most like horrific things you could, you know, imagine um, in in terms of sex and violence and incest. And uh, so I think that uh, taking it head on is like kind of the whole point of it. Now, did you, or going into it, you had to imagine that there may be some controversy, there may be some criticism from religious groups or audiences. I, I mean, how do you how do you reconcile with that? Are, are you are you ready for it? Are you open to it? I mean, do you know you're going to get hate without without even people watching it? Maybe you know. Are you ready for that? Yeah, I think that we've talked a lot about that uh, it's supposed to be a, a story that explores Christian themes and ideas. It's it's not uh, it's not supposed to be uh, like uh, interpreting the Bible. Uh, also, I mean, uh, one thing I realize is in this is crew being Christian, me being Catholic, we have a slightly different idea of like even revelations where revelations to Catholics is more uh, was a apocalyptic literature. That was met, that was written at the time as a genre, and it was known to that as that to inspire Christians who were being persecuted and and killed back then, as a story to give them hope. Um, and and yeah, like there's inaccuracies in it that we had to do almost just to tell it. Like the the term immaculate conception actually doesn't refer to um, uh, like her being pregnant that way. The Immaculate Conception actually refers to Saint Anne, which is Mary's mother, that she wasn't born with original sin. But the like ninety nine point nine percent people don't get that, and it's like it's like so we just have to use the shorthand, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Any any other thoughts, crew? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I think so. It's it's something that plagued me from the beginning. Is like not to do something that was sacrilegious, but ultimately doing something that could Trojan horse uh, the highest ideals of humanity to horror audiences, Christian themes to horror audiences. Isaac's Jewish, Lee's Catholic. I'm um, Christian, raised Methodist. So in exploring these themes, um, I'm aware there's going to be backlash, but there's also going to be a lot of good, which is more important that comes from it. Right. Like, um, you know, sex isn't bad. You know, it's what, you know, populates the earth, told to do it. It's uh, violence. We want it to be horrific because it is bad. And that's the point. And so I can live with it. Um, We've had extensive conversations about, you know, what the questions are we're trying to ask. And then it's up to the audience for their interpretation. And I think they're going to come away with a real thought provoking experience, you know, thinking about their own lives and, um, you know, how they interact and, you know, with, uh, you know, their family, their friends and like in their religious community. So, yeah. And now uh, obviously I'm trying to dance around because we don't want to spoil the movie. We don't want to talk too much about what's in there. So I'm trying to be very vague, very uh, dance around some things, but um, obviously horror, you know, movies, they rely heavily on atmosphere and tension. I'm curious if there's any particular, uh, techniques or choices that you guys made that, you know, uh, intentionally trying to uh, make the most of, of the location and, and the work you had ahead of you. Wait, well, can you, sorry, can you, you kind of broke up there for a second. Can you repeat that question? So sorry. sure. Any, any of the, the, the techniques or, or just choices you made for creating a more chilling, suspenseful atmosphere. Oh yeah. All right. So without giving away the opening, like suspense, right? It's like, uh, what, what, uh, how long is this going to go on before like the hammers drop, you know, before I see it? 
um, suspense is everything, you know, like that build, that tension, that's what we were going for. And um, there we had, you know, being an independent film there, we had to pick moments in the film where we were able to, to do this and able to like really flex in um, like our horror game. You know, all of our effects are practical. Like we're 95% practical in this movie and audiences love that. And we love doing it. It's so much fun. Um, anything to add to that, Leroy? Uh, yeah, I think we knew that we were going to have Brent Kaiser who did the sound for everything, everywhere, all at once do it. And so it was kind of like uh, uh, creating enough uh, uh, real estate within the scenes for Brent to do his thing and to trust in Brent that he would make this stuff work with us like um maybe like setting up the pins almost yeah and hey, hey man you guys are right on script because my next question was literally talking about visual effects um you know practical versus cgi but it's also another huge part of it especially in horror is sound design right like just Absolutely. just those those suspenseful tones and and just sounds that just send chills so I, i'm curious if there were any um specific influences or references that you used whether it be visually or uh, sound i was gonna say uh, uh, just, no we've got several <laughs> visual homages. we have several visual homages to a bunch of our favorite films like the shining and so on and so forth but as far as sound me and leroy showed up with like manifesto of okay. sound notes based yeah. when we had the, uh for lock picture and brent was just like oh yeah, yeah okay <laughs> so brent did everything everywhere all at once he does the, all the daniels movies honey boy he's like the guy in the indie world and that balance with isaac who is like one of the most hot and upcoming cinematographers he just did season two of loki which is gorgeous um we were put in a really good position and um yeah the sound design is probably my favorite part of uh I can't say that, but it's one of my favorite parts of this overall process because everything just comes to life. You know, all of a sudden you get like all the hair stand up on your arms when you get the right, like um, when you get the the right, whatever sound you're looking for in there, you know, uh, whether it's a hit or, a t or you know, whatever it may be. Um, it, it's really exciting. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And then, and then obviously speaking to like what we touched on a little bit, the, practical versus cgi i mean you know obviously there's certain things certain imagery you, you you can't do practical but um relying more on on what we can see because you know as as great as technology has come i do feel like it it does stand out when when you do something that we we all know is not uh physically in this world and it's, and it's computer generated um uh, you know what are what are the limitations when you're looking at a scene, certain characters, certain situations where you go, okay, like where's the line between practical and CGI when you have to utilize it? I would, I would say it would, it would be the budget, you know, like we want to do practical unless we have to, you know, um, I, I still like CGI. All it can do is make it as good as it would be in real life. That's it as good. So you, if you can do it, practical you want to do it practical like our opening scene the reason why it shot that way is because of uh budgetary limitations and it ultimately makes it better you know we have a shot that's going to be duplicated in other films and um it's the first time i'm, I'm sure maybe someone's done it but it's the first time i i've seen it and um that all came out of necessity and it came out of wanting to do things practical not being able to afford all the different things that the script called for. And then um, we ended up with, you know, something far better than we could originally imagine, I'd say. Wouldn't you, Lee? Yeah, I would say that when uh, CGI, it, it just, it's a little safe. It's almost like being on a roller coaster with the horror film rather than a practical effect. Can It, it can definitely needs to be aided with CGI, but then that has the capacity to get under the skin. I think that we were real inspired by that hereditary, uh, not hereditary, uh, Midsommar, you know, when he, the guy jumps off the cliff and then he gets smashed in the head. It just, it, it feels so visceral, real that, that, it, that it, that if you did that with CGI, then it wouldn't feel, uh, you wouldn't feel it viscerally anymore. You'd like, you'd, you'd only understand the idea of what was happening. 
Yeah, yeah that, that guy's dead. They killed him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Great stuff. That, that Great was stuff. such a haunting moment. That moment lives with me. That was such a haunting moment. Uh, so, you know, again, I don't want to spoil anything. So in the trailer, uh, which, you know, we've played on our show and, and, and others, um, you know, we see lots of different locations, a lot of snow covered uh, uh, settings. There's this great shot of what appears to be a cross, like dug out of the ground, filled with water. You're you're in it. Um, I, I'm it just it. I'm so fascinated by. I hate to say this, like the movie's great, but I'm more fascinated about the real world of like that must be difficult to to do. You know, just you know. Uh, out in the elements, snow, water, dark. I mean, t- talk to us a little bit about just kind of, you know, maybe the difficulties of, of working in those kind of conditions. Well, this uh, 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 is not compare anything to what your audience probably uh, encounters every day in their work. But uh, yeah. like I had a taste of it in terms of going in the actual ice because uh, it's it was in the middle of winter at night and uh, all the dream uh, – uh, stuff was like kind of grounded in something uh, like imagery that was real. And that's actually how uh, Rust, uh, Russian Eastern Orthodox, they get baptized sometimes. They'll actually cut a uh, cross in the ice and they'll go get baptized. Um, and we wanted to make it real. Again, if that was in a studio, it wouldn't have the same, you know, effect unless I was actually in danger of dying myself. <laughs> that, uh, that night, it was 16 degrees below zero. We had to cut into 22 inches of ice. Um, so, Ice baths and sauna is a big part of Estonian culture. And uh, everybody on our crew, they all did it there. Um, and then we had uh, Steffi, who was uh, Maria Vera's stunt double. She walked into the ice kind of like uh, mid uh, midriff. And um, everyone was like applauding. And then Leroy, it was a one shot and he was going to go under. And they were all like, no, this is a bad idea. You could die. Like, you're not supposed to go. You're going to come out and be delusional. So prior to that shot, me and Leroy are going over it because we have a camera uh, on a like a long jib tracking with him. And then he runs into the water and he goes under. So we're going over the shot and get everything ready. He's very focused. And then like um, his uh, like very direct and everything he's saying and how he's speaking to me when he runs call action he runs, goes, he goes under. And then after he came up, it was like talking <laughs> talking to someone that just got, you know, like standing eight count, like trying to get him back in the fight. <laughs> like it was uh, it was dangerous. His whole family called me in the days lining up like, can you talk him out of this? But he had yeah, trained was, for, for like he trained it turned for- into seven takes and we <laughs> them in there longer. And then Isaac is like. Yo, dude, I think we got to stop this. I, I think <laughs> what stopped it is uh, he goes under and comes up and then we're resetting the camera. And I was like, we got to get the, the camera, the under auto housing and push in on him. And he he goes, he goes, he puts his hair and he goes like that and it breaks off. And he's like, crew, uh, my hair's breaking off. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we had to we had to cut. Yeah. He can take it. He's tough. He's tough. He can take it. <laughs> I mean that yeah I've got no words that's uh yeah you, man good on you is that all, all whatever it takes for the shot I guess cuz I don't know <laughs> I would not I would not be uh, willing to do that um so fear obviously is subjective right everybody what what scares them is different different things different people um what do you guys hope will be the most unsettling or kind of thought provoking aspect of the film that you're going to leave with the audience. I think it's existential chair. Isn't that crew? Like that's kind of what we're going for. We want to have some of the jump scares, but that's like, you know, it doesn't stick with you the same way of, um, you know, the, 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 I think the jump scares and the tension that we have throughout the film is like the vehicle for the existential like uh thought-provoking experience you'll have that's the idea yeah you want people talking about the film versus any specific uh moment in it more of the the theme behind it i guess yeah i mean there's definitely jump scares in there and they'll love that definitely some uh you know we stay true to the genre for sure yeah um you know they there's something for 
Uh, obviously, there there are, there are many horror films. We touched on a few of them that you know have your more classic you know killer or this kind of um, external evil that's kind of chasing you know our, our the victims. Uh, and this is something very different. I'm just curious. Along the way, was there ever um, a thought or a conversation of having something more, I guess, more external, uh, like a like an outside evil force besides what's there in in the priests and the in the secret organizations and things? I think yeah, we tried really hard to kind of to put put it that the evil comes from within a lot more, and that and that crew referenced the uh, possession too about how to make that this possession would be like if a demonic like this, uh, the devil or these demons would be able to get in there and kind of only influence you so much, you know, you wouldn't be able to take over your entire body. Uh, it's like usually like based in something really traumatic happens to you. And I, I, I don't want to give away, but with when something happens to Father Fox, particularly, it's when you're able to then run with the uh, uh, run with what's already there and then work with it. Nice. Uh, we had that like, yeah. to echo your question, Michael. Um, we had that, that, that was a conversation at the top. It's like, there's a balance there, you know, it's, uh, what's within versus, you know, father, um, saw from the box day played by Thomas Kretschmann, who is, I mean, just one look at him and you know that he's, you know, antagonist material. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, um, I, I think what Lee said is pretty spot on. Yeah. So the horror genre has obviously evolved over <laughs> so many years of it since it's been around. How do you see your film kind of contributing to that evolution of horror cinema? What a great question. Um, I think, uh, wow. I think taking biblical themes, like I said, and, um, is something I think, you know, we're seeing a lot of right now, but what we're doing different is, you know, grounding it in authenticity. I think that's something after this, that will continue. You know, I think the witch and um, did a really good job of just that, not biblical themes, but taking something we're all familiar with and then, you know, grounding it in reality. Um, I think that's something that'll, that'll continue. Um, I'm sure there's tons more we could add to that. It's just, I haven't heard this question. It's a really good question. I'd, I'd, I'd probably could think on this a while. Leroy, what do you, what do you, uh, what do you think? I think to button up yours, I kind of like, I think the campiness of like the nun, if you take some of those ideas and then try to bring them back into reality, I think that like, that's something that we tried to do, but also more so just trying to actually make a, a Christian horror film that isn't, uh, that could be a little more uh, open to mainstream audiences, at least the ideas behind it. Um, yeah. Uh, someone, uh, one journalist told me he thought it might like, it's called hopeful horror. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. You heard that's it here a, first, folks. You heard like it here that. first. I hopeful like that. Horror. We're going we're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> to set a new subgenre, hopeful horror. Um, yeah. And actually something you said earlier just triggered a thought uh in that we were talking about kind of the ice baths right and uh i said you know man it's it, it's such a hot thing right now we're seeing you know all these celebrities and all these people do the ice baths and it's almost going to appear as if like oh these guys hopped on the trend when really you guys did this <laughs> way back you know oh, if man. anything you you started the trend of bringing the ice baths here so uh, kudos to you for that uh, because that's that's are, are you still are you still dabbling in the ice baths because that, that stuff is hardcore it is hardcore i need to because I, i'm not gonna lie it works but I, I i had a reason to do it every day so i wouldn't go into cardiac arrest uh, i don't have that same kind of uh, motivation but i will say uh i what i felt the best i ever did uh it definitely got cut me up apparently you burn a lot more calories doing that than you do from a workout sure. so i uh I started doing it um, uh, this year, and it is brutal. It doesn't. They say it gets. E it doesn't get easier. It's like every single time, it's a nightmare. And then the rest of your day, you feel amazing. But before you do it, it's. I mean, it doesn't get any easier. Like I don't yeah. want to do it. I definitely don't <laughs> want to. Do it. It's like jumping out of a plane. It's the the anxiety almost overrides the actual act of it. You know. It, yeah. It, 
it, it bothers <laughs> me. Um, we're, we're getting close to time here. So a couple more. Um, are there any, I guess I always, such a weird thing to fish for, but any interesting stories, things behind the scenes, any uh, challenges or just, just funny, you know, cause you, you gotta know, like to make this come alive, you spend so much time together. You're in the thick of it. You're, you're practically dying to make this film. Uh, so I got to imagine a lot of uh, silly things are going on behind the scenes to just break the tension sometimes. I mean, uh, top of the head, it's just the wolves working with these. They're not dogs like that. You know what they say? It's not. They are very big, very intimidating and very beautiful. And it was a night shoot and like, you know, below zero. And uh, I I'm I love dogs, but I was I did not feel comfortable around these animals. And then Leroy's just prancing around, <laughs> like walking right up to him as they're in this uh uh, you know, in this vicious state, which I'm sure Leroy could add about what that state actually is, but I didn't know at the time. It, um, but yeah, seeing them, uh, my fear and Isaac's fear about what he was doing, but you know, him being so calm about it made for a very interesting night. And then, um, you know, what came out was ultimately one of my favorite scenes, but, uh, uh, it was, it was pretty terrifying, but yeah, anything to add to that, Leroy? No, it was cool. I mean, uh, that's I have my favorite is like it's when you can see the behind the scenes of it, how long I am actually am like, you know, five feet from this wolf and he's like guarding his meat and I'm yelling at him and all five of them are like looking like they're going to attack me. And the, the trainer behind him was like, oh, no, it's OK. He just kept whispering in my ear. No, it's OK. You're not going to die. It's OK. I got it. No, you got to be the alpha. Be the alpha. <laughs> yeah, you be the alpha. Be the alpha. So like, like, I'm the, or if you're I'm not, the you're dead. <laughs> but, uh, if you're not. But the, so, OK. Zoltan the Wolfman was like this mythic figure himself. He like does all the um, animal training and for like a lot of European films. But um, like the first day we show up or, or like that day when we show up to set, we ride up and he's got like a, a like a almost like a kennel truck and he opens it. And I don't know if it was a gag, but he opens it. And then all of a sudden these wolves jump down and just attack him. And they're ripping pieces of his, uh, uh, what it looks like flesh, but he had meat, you know, he had meat tied to his body to simulate what we were going to have happen in the movie. And then I'm like, <laughs> you know, there's like two kind of people, how you handle that situation. One of them's like, you run for help or you, you run to help. And the other one's like, you scream for help. And that wasn't a proud moment for me. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's great. Um, so uh, as we wrap this thing up, I'm curious. Um, obviously, the focus is is putting this out there. Um, I know it played. Uh, it's played. Uh, 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 sorry, the pop was it popcorn festival or or something like that. Um, what's the early feedback you're getting? I mean, what what are you what are you thinking uh, uh, about the audience reaction so far? Yeah, loving it. Yeah, so far it's going really good. It's a huge relief. Yeah, yeah you never know how people are going to uh, take something, especially like dealing with such controversial themes, like biblical themes. Uh, but so far, like our reviews that have come back have been amazing, like way more than we could ever, you know, I mean, it's what we hope for, but, you know, you don't really know. Like um, being considered one of the, you know, best horror movies of the year right out the gate is like, you know, that's not to be taken lightly. That's a hell. That's a hell of an honor. Yeah, and it's a, and it's a crowded arena. It's starting to get a little more more crowded than it maybe used to be. But uh, I can say that I sat down and I watched uh, an early review copy of it. And um, while I'm not the biggest horror aficionado, I really enjoyed it. And I I made sure I hand selected a few good friends who are all about horror, and they they really got a kick out of it. And, and everyone got their own little you know their own little elements from it that they really liked. And you know. Uh, I don't want to, again, I don't want to, I keep wanting to say specific things, but I can't, yeah, 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 I can't yeah. <laughs> talk about it, but, uh, but needless to say, it's, it's very enjoyable. Um, it's left uh, ambiguous at best. I, I, I can say, I think, and, and could there be sequels? Could there be an uh, expanding uh, universe being built here? Definitely. We already have a, it's basically planned as a trilogy uh, at least. Because like I, I something that's so interesting is to explore them when they're twelve years old, 
And then especially when they're 30 years old, when it it like really goes down. So we wanted to have the story be as self-contained as possible. And then even the second film, it's like, we approach that, it's going to be a self-contained film that just, that deals with, that, that picks up as that backstory. And uh, maybe even a, a prequel that it, it explores Vox Day. That was like a thousand years uh, in the past. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's rife for um, further digging into and expanding. And I, I sometimes think too, just, just not forward and back, maybe side to side, right. Exploring other parts of the, of this universe, of this world you've built outside of, of those elements. Um, if you need a guy, I can, we'll, we'll hammer out some details and it's fine. We'll, I got, <laughs> I got some ideas for you guys. So we'll, we'll work that out. Um, but before I let you go, anything. So besides this and the sequel, Anything else that uh, we could look forward to? Any other projects or anything maybe in the back catalog you want to shout out so people should go check out? Well, actually, we have a movie that comes out next called Devil's Fruit, and it's a uh, uh, revenge drama um, that's, you know, filmed over 12 years across 16 different countries. And it's like our version of boyhood, but, you know, with more violence and, um, uh, uh, I guess you'd say like criminal behavior. <laughs> um, but yeah, that Leroy wrote and uh, uh, directed that and we starred in it and I edited it. And that was kind of our, you know, coming of uh, age as far as developing as filmmakers in order to get to be able to do something like this movie. Yeah. Outstanding. Well, I'm, a, I, I'm all about a good revenge flick. So I will be, looking for that and and hopefully we can we can talk about that when it uh when it finally comes out i'd love to have you guys back and and dive more into your into your work and <clears throat> and things but i want to thank you guys uh for your time so much uh i'll give you the last couple seconds to i don't know say goodbye to the audience that are that are watching this yeah well thank you guys for listening i mean uh <laughs> yeah see to uh, see deliver us september 29th out in theaters and select cities and on demand and Apple and Amazon Prime and everywhere else you can see a movie September 29th. Go see it. Come awesome. support. That's yeah, uh, we, military, uh, right? it's all military. Sorry. It's all military. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, then absolutely. Thank you guys for your service. I mean, you guys are the best. I was cursed. Yeah. <laughs> really. Thank you. Really. Thank you for your service. Everyone absolute gratitude. Awesome. Well, we really appreciate it. I've had the pleasure of speaking with co-directors crew ennis and leroy coons uh thank you guys so much and and we look forward to seeing more work from you guys in the future